you. Good morning, everyone. And uh, as Russ said, I mean, this is a, a milestone being the first user summit. Um, we recently have uh, formally joined the, uh, the Zen Project Advisory Board. Uh, I'm second seat uh, behind uh, my boss, Jay Williams, uh, who sits on the board. Um, I am the senior principal product manager for a product called AppLogic. Um, who uh, App uh, Computer Associates acquired a small startup company uh, named 3Terra. And that was the, the nexus for um, them moving into the cloud uh, arena. But I um, wanted to start out and open this talk with some of the motivation behind the title of this, you know, not your dad's hypervisor, not your father's hypervisor. There seems to be, you know, a huge misconception out there and, and you know, we're all, I think we're all working hard to uh, dispel some of the rumors and the myths about Zen. And um, one of the things, I was actually watching a presentation for an OpenStack. Uh, it was an architectural overview of, of Grizzly. And a uh, great overview. At the end of it, um, the speaker was taking questions. And the second person that came up, uh, a bit indignant, <laughs> walked up, grabbed the microphone, and was like, why is Zen on those slides? <laughs> Isn't Zen dead? Um, to which the speaker re replied, absolutely not. It's absolutely still active. It's still a viable hypervisor. It's still open source. And um, absolutely still uh, important to, um, not only to the Zen community itself and, and, and cloud in general, but for the future of OpenStack as it provides yet another alternative uh, platform to, to deploy upon. The other alternative <laughs> title I had for this uh, was the little hypervisor that could. Um, you know, as you see Russ's t-shirt that says, you know, Zen, Zen's been around for 10 years and that's, you know, a millennium <laughs> in, in, in this industry. Um, and it really did start to have small beginnings. And uh, it's come quite a long way. Um, let me quickly start, just through this <laughs> obligatory slide up here. Um, I've kind of come full circle. I started out um, working in the software space, being a, um, prim I'm primarily, you know, technologist, hacker, tinker, in, in my own right. Um, Linux and I go way back. I <laughs> remember installing Debian from floppies <laughs> back in the day. But uh, product manager by day, I actually do enjoy building products and um, infusing them with the features that customers want. Uh, but I started out network planning and design as an engineer right out of college. Uh, really looked at um, helping you know, a large company do the network planning and design for uh, their network upgrade. But part of that was looking at network management, specifically you know, the software that manages uh, the infrastructure. So in the early beginning, similar, similar to what the cloud is doing today, uh, I was really focusing on how software managed uh, the infrastructure of corporate data networks in that sense, but you know, obviously um, looking at other elements, network elements, compute elements within um, the infrastructure. Um, and then became a product manager, moved up to the Silicon Valley, became a product manager specifically for layer three switches. So I ended up getting into the hardware business. <laughs> um, and actually built ethernet switches from the ground up from chipset design, uh, PCB layouts and all that. Um, and then ironically ended up back into the <laughs> software space working in, in the cloud space with, uh, with AppLogic. Um, and then simply because this is a, a Linux, <laughs> Linux slash Zen show. I actually do manage to code from time to time. Um, some people think that it, just because I wear a fancy shirt and I've got product manager in my title, I, <laughs> I can't do that. Anyhow, so let's go back to the beginning. I think, you know, I, I, rather than go through the entire history, I think, you know, everybody, and again, I, I, I don't know, you know, what everyone here, uh, what your experience has been with Zen or the length of experience you've had with Zen. Obviously this began as a research project back in the uh, University of Cambridge, uh, Ian Pratt. Um, the point to be made there about that is that although it started small uh, as a research project within a university environment, um, it was designed very well and it evolved very quickly through in that environment. Um, I've heard some people say it was, it was in a clean environment. <laughs> um, as I guess in contrast to a very public open, you know, uh, hashing about of, of commits and, and whatnot in, in the open source community. Obviously it was open sourced um, and it was uh, 
uh, shepherded along uh, through its history. And I think that you know, Lars gave a great speech uh, yesterday or the day before about you know, the lessons learned through that evolutionary process and, and that history uh, of Zen. Um, but again, it was designed, tested, and improved in a, in a research environment. Um, obviously, still many of us, many of us in this room, still maintain that it's the best design hypervisor uh, that's available today. And the proof of that is really that it continues to, um, to provide the ability to scale and, uh, and adapt to new hardware. Uh, obviously, the architecture of the hypervisor itself, um, the DOMU, DOM, DOM0 DOMU structure, um, and the ability to scale with, as, and primarily the commentary uh, was around the number of cores. As the number of cores increase, the core count um, on a given piece of hardware, um, having the ability to uh, adapt to that, to that new hardware. And we'll see this in the future as well as um, we see you know, Zen ARM get deployed on, on ARM processors, uh, seeing the densities there increase uh, on a given, within a given uh, piece of hardware. But I'll move uh, quickly past that and, and start with the beginning of 3Terra uh, and AppLogic. 3Terra um, was essentially a small cloud um, startup that was looking for a fabric. Um, 3 Terra was one of the very early entrants uh, into the cloud space, actually predating uh, the launch of Amazon. Um, and at the time, there was no cloud. Um, there was no concept of scaling something to cloud levels. And really, we, we had to build our own. We, we looked at uh, a number of different uh, uh, technologies that were on the market at the time, uh, looking at Zen and its capabilities um, and I simply threw this up as, you know, just a rough, it, I mean, this specifically addresses, you know, PV, uh, the PV architecture. Uh, but we were really looking for, um, you know, something that was open source, and I'll speak to this on the next slide, um, a solid architecture for, you know, security was obviously a primary concern in the beginning as we uh, were looking to design this product um, and the concerns around security in the cloud space. Um, scalability uh, obviously was another um, another concern, and looking at uh, the future direction and viability, and, and kind of tying our wagon to a technology, uh, specifically a hypervisor. Uh, what we were looking for, um, obviously HVM. Um, the concept of HVM was has been long-standing in, in the space, you know, back from the days of of uh, IBM mainframes versus pair virtualization, and. Uh, its adoption uh, in the x86 space with Zen specifically, um, and obviously looking at uh, at the architecture there. So specifically on uh, on the open source side of things, we really wanted to be able to um, uh, build our own cloud fabric, and we wanted to be able to have some some element or some some amount of control and the ability to patch or optimize, um, and it really have a, a control of our own destiny. Uh, in the respect that you know, we were kind of uncharted territory at the time. Um, obviously, uh, we primarily just used Zen itself uh, rather than using any of the, uh, the other uh, tool sets that came along after that. Um, some of the things that, that Citrix obviously infused into, um, into Zen with Zen Server and, and all those packages around it. We, we were using Zen, native Zen, just the hypervisor, and instrumenting it ourselves. And because of that, we wanted to have control. If, if for whatever reason we, we needed to integrate in some w weird, unique, unique way, uh, we'd have the freedom to. As it turns out, <laughs> we really didn't need to. Um, I think uh, actually look back and uh, talk to our um, development team, um, senior engineers that were around at that time, um, we really only submitted five patches. And there were bugs that we found along the way. Um, so it was a testament to not only the original um, research uh, effort at Cambridge, but also the, the community that was contributing at the time. And if any of you recall, I mean, Intel and IBM were, were huge uh, contributors at the time to, uh, to the hypervisor itself. So there was a great deal, at, at the time, a great deal of, uh, of contribution and growth in the hypervisor itself. Uh, we've obviously found, found around, I would probably have to look up the patches to figure out exactly what, <laughs> what specifically we addressed in the, back in the day. but. Um, but again, that was one of the tenants that we, that we were looking for in, in a platform. Um, solid architecture, obviously security 
uh, was a concern uh, from day one. The way we architected our platform, we isolated as much as we could. Um, obviously, that started at the hypervisor layer. Um, uh, whenever we spoke to customers, that's you know one of their primary concerns. Obviously, you know moving uh, workloads into the into the cloud that was an obvious concern. In discussing the hypervisor architecture and identifying the isolation between guest OSs and um, and host uh, DOM U environments, and identifying that there was a uh, a very rigid, well, strict <laughs> or structured um, delineation between um, guest OSs. And then one of the other things, uh, uh, looking at scalability, one of the, the, the anecdotal things that, that came out of that time, um, we were doing dimensions testing. And <laughs> I, I call it the 1024 bug. Actually, I should call it the 1025 bug. Uh, essentially, we were pushing the envelope to, to, to understand how many virtual machines we can actually um, launch at once. And um, we hit a bug that was the, the, the 1025th failed. So obviously it was a you know, power of two bug and it was relatively easy to find. But I think the, uh, the response back from either the community or one of the mailing lists was like, why would you ever want to do that? <laughs> Right? <laughs> Why would you ever want to wa launch that many v VMs? And I really kind of mark this as the, you know, uh, the point where we kind of stepped into the cloud era and stepped into you know, the, the realm of cloud scale. And the fact that you know, this was a relatively easy bug to fix because it was obviously a dimension. Uh, I don't know if it was a, a, an array boundary or something like something ob obscure um, that no one ever thought to, <laughs> to provide space for that. But, this, the sheer fact that someone took a step back and, and realized, oh, we just pushed this thing to a limit and took a step back even further and said, what could you do with that? <laughs> and that's really kind of the point where we saw the ability to, to, to kind of push the envelope on, on you know, launching virtual machines into, um, into that realm and really looking at, and, I, and I, I, we can only imagine that Amazon saw this as well, you know, um, and looking at, at what I call the cloud scale. Um, and many argue as well, if, you know, <laughs> we always get into this, some, some people get into this argument of Zen versus VMware, or, or what about all the other hypervisors? And they're, depending on how they've, you know, come to cloud, um, many, still, many think that, that VMware is, is a cloud hypervisor. Uh, many may argue with that uh, for its inability to scale at certain, to a certain degree. Um, but again, we, we chose, uh, Zen for that for that one of the primary reasons we uh, we saw that uh, capability in place, and then looking at future direction and viability, the pair virtualization capability of Zen um, really saw uh, obviously HVM had had fair performance, um, but the, the the ability to to provide pair virtualization capabilities within the guest OS, primarily Linux was obviously the the, the the beginning of our uh, of our support with, within our platform is providing um, that performance on, on Linux hosts. Um, we obviously, beyond that, uh, provide uh, Windows-based pair virtualization drivers for Windows OSs. Um, and I think Zenserver provides their own. Um, but again, that, the ability to even provide that level of, of, of call it punch through or, <laughs> or optimization, uh, the ability to actually address the hardware rather than going through um, an, em an emulation. So jumping into the present, uh, this is an important slide really, but um, you know, obviously, s and identifying that Zen is still the best and, and, and most robust uh, hypervisor that we have available today. Uh, and again, this is what I was referring to as cloud scale. Um, looking at Amazon and what they've done with Zen uh, in its history, but the other thing that, that I, I, I kind of pulled this up, I pulled this as actually a screenshot of one of, the, one of our reports. This is you know, simply looking at our, um, we pull a great deal of analytics um, out of our customers' um, grid environments. Uh, <laughs> uh, 2.4.10 is, is a very early release uh, of our code. We actually um, had a customer in Asia that was one of our first customers. And this grid of five servers is still running, you know, 1,474 days later. So, and that's one of our you know, long, oldest running grids <laughs> out there. Um, we had some other older ones that actually recently have been shut down. 
but it's a testament to the stability um, of the hypervisor and the environment that we've you know been able to um, to leverage you know the the strength of of, of hypervisor at our core uh, as a product i mean we we do a great deal of, of work on top of that and and really we um, you know we promote that as our value add. But without this, and, and, and again, you know, showing this to, to our customers that say, you know, we have a solid foundation. And that, sound, and that foundation is found in Zen. Um, and then the other thing that we did recently, um, and this is again, not getting into the bits and bytes, but moving from uh, Zen Linux to PVOps, um, for those who are not familiar historically, um, Zen wasn't part of the Linux kernel. Um, it was essentially a patch to uh, the primary curl. There was a move from, from the, the old way of doing things to the new way of doing things, which is um, a PVOps capability that's native to the Linux kernel, um, introduced in Zen 4.x and recently the, the Linux 3.x kernels. Uh, one of the steps that we took um, was obviously to move to that. Uh, we saw benefit uh, in a number of different... We primarily were running Linux 2.6.18 and... Um, I forget the exact version of Zen we were running. It may have been three dot something, anyhow. Um, in any case, we took a step forward because we wanted to gain that functionality. All those patches that came into Zen, as well as the kernel base, and launched this in, this was, I think, two releases ago for our product. Um, and it was a little bumpy in the beginning because it was obviously brand new Zen, <laughs> brand new kernel. As you can imagine, we, we tested, tested it extensively and uh, we still ran into little uh, nooks and crannies that. Um, but again, we've, and we've been able to go from uh, you know, an old architecture, an old uh, uh, layout for Zen and, and, and the Linux kernel and jump into a, uh, uh, the future direction of, um, of Zen and, and maintain the stability. I think we've had some, some great stability on, this, um, on these versions as well. So quickly looking into the future, um, continual innovation. I think that's one of the things that um, uh, why we're continuing to, 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 to drive and leverage Zen uh, in our product. Um, I, I threw up improvements with the stub domains and better security, uh, performance and scalability, um, simply because I think that's something that we haven't leveraged enough uh, in our own product and, and looking at the mini OS concept as far as being able to launch um, and um, um, similar to what Mirage OS is doing, uh, the ability to, to, to control and better, uh, de you know, to move uh, driver IOs or the, you know, put a, putting things into a driver stub or putting um, IO into a dedicated um, domain uh, is something that we want to leverage uh, more in the future. The reason I put Mar uh, Mirage OS up here, we spoke about it uh, this, just this past week, um, as they're emerging as, you know, the ability to, um, to deploy smaller VMs with the, without the heavy weight of, um, of a full OS and really pushing, if you kind of imagine the dimensions of, uh, of Zen as a hypervisor and its ability to do d different, uh, different things, where, uh, Zen itself is being stretched in different ways. Um, and again, we, we're, we're looking at that uh, and that ability um, um, to leverage that in our own product. Um, obviously, we've leveraged a lot of the other capabilities. I mean, and, and again, Zen, Zen has a wealth of other capabilities as well that I probably even, I haven't even really touched upon that, that, we, that we leverage some, uh, some things, live migration, the things that you typically see from, uh, from, a, from a hypervisor uh, has evolved over time that uh, it's, you know, it's a full-fledged, full uh, comparable hypervisor to anything else out there in, uh, in the marketplace. And that's why we continue to use it and we'll use it in the future. Um, I touched upon Zen ARM. Uh, it's very interesting for, uh, for us. We, the Zen ARM aspect of, uh, of the Zen hypervisor uh, is very interesting to me personally simply because I think that um, looking at, uh, and I, I, meant, I, uh, I referenced the Moonshot servers coming from HP and the idea of a higher density, uh, lower cost, lower heat dissipation, uh, lower power consumption chip um, as the future of cloud, simply because looking at some of the deployments that we're seeing out as far as platform as a service and really eliminating as much 
um, of the weight of a virtual machine from the OS level and being able to deploy the smallest footprint of a task and being able to boil those cloud tasks, if you will, down. I call them workers. Um, and the ability to, to get to that micro level and the ability to deploy across a smaller compute element. And what, we're, what I've seen in the um, HP is taking a very high density approach to uh, packing as many of those compute elements into a rack unit um, with the lower power consumption, with the lower heat. Um, that I think is the, and the ability to, to provide that amount of density. I really see that as the future of cloud uh, personally. And I think Zen is right at the forefront of that. And it's phenomenal that, that the Zen is, is bringing uh, all of its capabilities, or as, ma as many of its capabilities as possible on ARM uh, to that space simply because I think that it is uh, an emerging uh, technology I think will be um, leveraged uh, very well um, in the cloud space. Uh, the other one that, that I didn't even think of and that, that Lars pointed out to me was in uh, its use in the automotive industry and you know, the ability to, um, to virtualize on top of an, uh, an ARM system on a chip uh, for the automotive integration uh, industry uh, is something that I think will um, prove <laughs> rather interesting for Zen as well. Uh, but again, all of this, all of this uh, is a testament to its, its design, its architecture, and as we sit here today, the, the infusion back by the community into, um, into, into Zen will only improve the process. I think that, um, and, and again, if you get a chance to, to grab, <laughs> I keep referring to Lars's presentation because it was an excellent one. Um, seeing the history is important as well. Seeing you know, the bumpy road as we've, uh, as we've had in the past and moving into the future with uh, the effort of the Zen Project uh, board as well as the community um, will really cement uh, its future. I think that's where my next slide here. One of the other reasons why I think that we're, we continue to be um, um, committed to Zen and will continue to be uh, committed to Zen in the future is uh, the work that the, you know, the Zen Project uh, uh, group is, uh, is doing uh, the Motivated Advisory Board, I think we all have a very vested interest in seeing Zen uh, continue its successes. Um, the fact that we're having both user and developer summits, I mean, the fact that um, you know, most other projects focus on developers, and the fact that we're here sitting here today um, and focusing on, on users specifically is, is a very important thing as well, uh, we believe. Um, and again, uh, you know, obviously the Zen project will you know, continue to foster and support uh, innovation in the space. Uh, touch upon OpenStack. Um, we're looking at OpenStack, obviously, as everybody is, uh, to understand what its impact will be uh, in the cloud industry as it, as it emerges as a, as a, I think many are saying it's, it's going to be a de facto uh, cloud uh, uh, fabric orchestration and <laughs> all, uh, some people <laughs> call it a, a, the grand unified <laughs> um, standard or the grand unifying standard. Um, it's good to see Zen involved in that. Uh, it's very good to see, um, obviously it's been involved with it, but it, it seems like more and more um, uh, you know, from, from presentations to speeches to uh, videos up on YouTube of people getting Zen server up and running um, as the underlying hypervisor layer underneath OpenStack. Um, simply because we have obviously vested uh, customer space as well as engineering effort uh, with Zen, seeing that um, uh, getting adopted in the OpenStack space is, uh, is important for us as we look at um, you know, our future plans as a product and, and interfacing and integrating with OpenStack. Um, so we'll be able to, to, to bring all of our, um, our capabilities and our, our be able to onboard our workloads and our virtual machines and our applications onto an OpenStack fabric um, that's running with Zen. Um, Zenserver.org, um, Citrix did a, I, I think it was a phenomenal uh, effort with um, releasing Zenserver um, uh, into the open source formally, officially, uh, through Zenserver.org. I think it's going to foster uh, a great deal of, um, of adoption and integrations with, um, you know, that with its, you know, with its release and its support through Zenserver.org, I think that 
more than ever before. I think it was, it was available, um, but I think the tool sets and everything, all the other pieces and elements around uh, Zen Server itself um, that haven't been released prior to, to ZenServer.org, um, having those available, I think that I've already seen some, um, this, it's, it's interesting, um, Zen Server and, and OpenStack, we're using uh, Zen Server under OpenStack um, and Ceph, which is a distributed object store. Um, it was actually posted to the Zen, um, the Zen Project web, web page that someone very quickly was able to, um, not in a completely turnkey fashion, very quickly get an infrastructure up and running with Zen Server and OpenStack. Um, and the fact that that's, you know, that's even available and, and, and readily turnkey um, like <laughs> getting from zero to a fully blown OpenStack environment um, is phenomenal. And I think that there was, there was already con contributions for better installation of, of Zen Server. And you know, so that's, I think that will uh, continue to prove uh, invaluable for the community, um, as well as we look at you know, some of the, the capabilities of Zen Server as well uh, from our own product uh, perspective. And then I'll jump here to the end here, uh, ran through here really quickly. Um, and I really kind of gave a, a, top, a top level overview of, of, of why we, we still strongly believe that Zen is a viable uh, hypervisor. Um, we'll absolutely continue to contribute to, um, to the Zen project as well as um, you know, doing everything we can to, uh, to contribute back into that as well as uh, use it in the future. I'll obviously look at OpenStack as well. Um, but if, are there any questions?